Hello friends, Ben Ochart here. Thank you for tuning in. I've got a uh, very cold situation, situation outside. It's under 10 degrees. This is a lightly insulated garage. I have a garage door insulation. I have some, some foam insulation on there. And I think these two outside walls are, are not insulated. So I have three walls that are not insulated. I believe the ceiling would be because there's a bedroom built on top of the garage. So I'm assuming that's got some insulation in it but it is chilly in here. Right now, with a space heater running, I'm running a, uh, a pretty strong space heater at 72 degrees. It's about 65 here in the fish room. Not horrible, but some of the heaters in the smaller tanks, like the better tank that is right near the door, that heater is working really hard and it's got the tank at 77. I might just put a second heater in there just in case, just as a backup, and otherwise, it's, it's surprising to me that the bigger tanks are actually staying warmer and very often I'll check on them and the heaters aren't even, they're not even on. Uh, and I think it's because of the equipment. You have the pumps running, you have the, the canister filters and those things are producing heat and in turn they heat up the water and so they work as a sort of indirect heater and so it's not uncommon even when that when it's very cold for the larger tanks to have the heaters actually off you know the controller has them off because the tanks are are running around 80 78 to 80 degrees the smaller tanks 55 and even the 90 th those are working those are working hard to stay warm and in the event of a power outage i have charged up the uh the backup i have a, a small uh uninterrupted power supply, a, a U, UPS, uh, that's I think 1500 watts. I'll tell you the priority would be to run the heaters uh, and uh, even more so than filtration because I think that would impact the fish even more if there was a power outage. I have, um, I, I have air, air uh, that would be going to all the tanks. All the tanks have lithium battery backup air pumps. A lot of them by, some by Higer and but most of them are aquarium co-op and so they would kick on in the event of a power outage otherwise I would need to somehow keep the tanks warm so I'd probably uh, run all, at least one of the heaters in each of the big tanks because I have a heater in the sump and a heater in the tank so the in the tank heaters would be run to the power uh, unit and then probably one one heater in each of the small ones so I'd have to run some uh, definitely run some extensions with multiple outlets and running that much wattage I'm not sure how long that, that backup would run. Fingers crossed that we don't get a power outage because these tanks, I think, will, will go down in temperature very, very quickly and probably get into a, uh, a zone that is uh, not good. I'm, I'm pumping warm air in from the house with a fan up above me here. That's pumping some of the, some of the heated air from the house into the garage and together with the space heater, it's, it's helping a little bit. But again, if there's a power outage, um, I'm in bad shape. The weather is not going to be warming up anytime soon. We're still looking at temperatures at around, uh, around 10 degrees or less as a low over the next four or five days. They have changed Thursday from, from uh, more snow to rain. So it looks like uh, we might be getting out from, from buried under. So uh, fingers crossed, I am pricing bigger generators. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at them and getting quotes. I got a quote from a company that came by to, uh, to look at one of those permanent gas power generators. And I am also looking at some of the portable generators that are out there, uh, the larger units that operate off of gas or propane. So um, let's look at some of the tanks, in particular, some of the new fish that I've picked up, some that you've seen and some that you haven't. Let's go ahead and take a look at those. Maybe we'll get lucky and the red tear will come out from behind that, that big cave. Uh, one, one thing I suggest, don't use floating plants in aquariums with uh, internal filters. This internal filter is, is getting clogged up. And as you, you can see under it, I don't know if you can see under it from this angle, but it has, uh, it, it has one inlet on the bottom and, and it's actually, that's where the intake is. And, it's getting plugged up a lot with hornwort. So I don't suggest use floating plants 
with, uh, with powerful internal filters. Another thing I've noticed that these flat, these flat heaters like this one here, these little flat heaters you can pick up, this thing's been a little bit worthless. This tank is like, is not really warming up at all. So I'm gonna pull that thing out and, and put another, uh, another heater in there. I've had a couple of these flat heaters and they usually don't do much. So if you're gonna be uh, cooling down or in a room where they're gonna be cooling down, don't count on these flat, these flat heaters. I don't, I don't think they're, they're reliable. This tank is doing well. This tank is, uh, again, staying warm without the heaters running. And fish are all hanging out, wondering what I'm doing. Beautiful chocolate. Sally. And again, I think, I mean, I've got a nice big aqua heater there in the corner. I think that's about 800 watts. I've got another uh, real strong unit, about 300 or more watts in the sump. And they're off right now because the uh, equipment is providing enough heat. There's the fire mouth back there hanging out. And I've got my little Nicaragua. Jack Dempsey back there. Hanging back. There's the green tear. Love the colors, shapes, patterns on these fish. There they go. Fire mouth on the Nicaragua. Always doing their face off. Here are the Oscars tucked up in the corner. You can lure them out. They think there's gonna be some food. So let's take a look at the um, the albino acaras, they're just doing phenomenal. You can see them right here. Pick these up from uh, Dan's, Dan's Fish. And I'll tell you, they, they are just really, really thriving, all five of them. There's four that seem to hang out on the right side of the tank. And then there's one that's just sort of a loner that hangs out on the left side. Like these four hang out together. The four that you see up here. These are sort of formed up kind of a click. And then this one over here just kind of hangs out by himself. I don't know why. Don't know what's behind it. Why he's the outsider. Doesn't seem to be causing him much stress. Those rummy nose. Rummy nose are such a cool looking fish, right? Lemon tetras in there, some quarries. Love the way the rasbora is cool. So anyway, these fish are doing great. Some little autos in here. This one hanging on the heater right there. This tank has two 100 watt aquarium co-op heaters in it. Both the 55s do. And this one says that it's hit the target temperature of 80. And this one is working. So, Not sure why the disparity in temperature between the left side and the right side. This side does have much more water circulation because there is a uh, Marineland Emperor 400 hang on back filter on there. You can see that little uh, that little plant planter from Aquarium Co-op. It's doing a good job with that with that Anubius holding it in place. It was just floating all around, so it's doing well now. Here's the 90 gallon. You ever use these feeders? You see this up here? You drop some bloodworms in there and uh, gives everybody a shot at them. I, I'll put two cubes in there, sometimes three, and the fish will just lose their minds. But these guys are doing great. That's, uh, that's like the albino acaros, except not albino. That's an AC Hecali. No longer classified as a geo, like this one here. This is a geo. A couple electric blue acaras. 
Look how fat that Buenos Aires Tetra is right there. I don't know what, what he's been eating. Maybe it's a female and she's gonna lay eggs, I don't know. Here's the red shoulder and the red spotted. Now let's take a look at some other new fish. Let's take a look at the, uh, I love the colors on electric blue cara. I think this is about, um, I think 600 watts, 500 watts. This little unit right here seems to do a pretty good job. Keeps the tank nice and warm. So we go back here, you can see the Congos that I picked up. And these Congos are doing, doing well. Eight of them, we did a recount, right? There's eight of them. Love the beautiful colors. These are called blue Congos. And you'll notice above them are some little, uh, some little neon rainbows. Not sure if you can tell the neon color under this lighting, but they're very, very cute. With a little bit of red fringe on the, uh, on the dorsal. From Dan's fish and the Congos were picked up from uh, Cunningham Tropicals. I'll put a link, you can hear the whole story. I had another fish that came in and unfortunately I had a problem with them. And I want, I want to tell you something, uh, Dan's fish, Dan is like top, top tier, top notch. And by that, what I mean is, uh, I've never had anybody respond as quickly and as positively to an issue with a, a fish like Dan did. So uh, I give, you know, Dan gets five stars for the way he actually worked with me on a fish that had an issue. So thank you, Dan, if you're hearing this. Big shout out to you, my friend. There's the pleco that you never see. That's his cave. A couple of little quarries in here in my live bear tank, and you can see it's just teeming with little guys. And again, there's a, I believe that's another 50 watt uh, co-op heater in there and a couple of sponge filters doing the cleaning on this tank. Some hornwort and some Sprite. These guys are all doing great. The adults, I don't think I have any adults left. I think the adults have all sort of passed on and all that's left now is the second and third generation of babies. So I know live bears don't have the longest life expectancy, but they sure do li live, they, they live on in the high volume of fry that they create. This being a combination of uh, mollies and, uh, and guppies. So here's the, uh, the 29 with the betta. Here's the betta hanging out on his log. You can make him out. And of course he's had to share the tank with a lot of baby plecos. You see this heater is kind of working its butt off and it's keeping things. It oh, just went up to 78. Just switched from 77 to 78. So, oh, there goes back to 77. So it's working. It's working, it's primarily because it's right, right by this door here. And it's, it's a bit of a cold spot. And then the way I run the space heater, it's pointed away from here. But, but of course the fan from the house is blowing this way, so. I might just throw an extra heater in here. But I think 77 is okay. Betta's like it a little bit warmer but I think he'll be okay at 77. Keep a close eye on it, make sure it doesn't get colder than that. By the way, I've got some baby, uh, not sure if you can make it out in there. It's right inside there. There's a baby uh, pagoda snail. And there was one over at the top of the wood here. Not sure if you can, if, if you follow this piece of, of wood, go to the very top of it, and you'll see sort of the king of the hill there 
I'm not sure if I, if you can make it out or if it'll even stay in focus. Let's see right there. Right there, that's a baby pagoda with some really pretty stripes right at the top of that piece of wood. So, very, very cool. They all came from Big Mama, that big snail that's in the 55 gallon. Just a beautiful uh, pagoda snail. Let's go over to the uh, 300, see what's going on there. And again, this is another tank that is staying warm just off the heat coming off of equipment. What do I have in here? I have a FX6 behind it, and I have uh, two Cichet, Cichet 5.0 Syncra pumps that are pushing a tremendous amount of water. You can see there one output, and there's the other output over there. So they're pushing a lot of water, breaking up a lot of surface tension, creating a lot of, creating a lot of oxygen but this tank is having, the bigger tanks are having less because of the equipment, I believe. Or they're just staying warmer with a lot less uh, energy consumption. Hey, look who came out. Let's see if I can zoom in so I don't spook him. Oh, there he goes. Come on. Come on, big guy. Yeah, being real shy. So there's a look at what's going on here in the fish room. Never a dull moment, like always. And I hope that this uh, freeze breaks pretty soon. And fingers crossed on uh, no power outages, please. I think that uh, we're okay otherwise. Even below 10 degrees, the, tank, the tanks are staying okay. That's it for me, my friends. Any ideas, tips, comments, share them below. And we'll talk about this and a lot more on Saturday at the Cichlids and Coffee live stream. And if you'd like to support this, this fish room and uh, the video creation, everything else that goes on, consider becoming a Patreon, a Patreon monthly supporter. Starts for as little as $3 a month. Uh, the details are in the description. Thank you, my friends. You are the best. And if you'd like to, uh, learn a little bit more about heaters and controllers and things like that I click on these videos here down here for water changes up here for my best tips and down here if you'd like to subscribe all right bye bye